Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going over my favorite plays in DFS for Week 9. Starting off at quarterback this week, I'm going to be all in on Cam Newton, and I won't be using another quarterback most likely. Tampa Bay is on a historically bad pace this year, and quarterbacks are absolutely shredding them this year. They are 32nd in pass DVOA and have allowed over 26 fantasy points per game. If for some reason you don't want to play Cam this week because of the ownership you will have, there is some other options. Kirk Cousins has a nice matchup versus Detroit, and they have picked off just two passes this season, and they have allowed 15 passing scores in seven games as they come in ranked 29th in defense per PFF. On the other hand, Cousin leads the NFL in completions, and his average game this season is 315 yards and two touchdowns. In six games against the NFC this season, he's averaged 331 passing yards and outing with 13 touchdown passes. I also like Drew Brees in what should be a high-scoring game as Vegas has this pegged as a 60-point over-under. He has seen his passing attempts decrease to only 27 per game, but the Rams' defensive backs are something they will look to exploit as it has been weakening week by week. Also at home, Brees has a 131.1 QB rating and 8 scores with no picks in 3 games. Last up, we have Jared Goff in a game where the Rams are actually dogs in a 60-point over-under. The Saints have the number D number 2 DVOA run defense and are a bottom tier pasty. I think we see one of Goff's ceiling games in New Orleans. And Alright, all right, hear me out here, but I am on board with a fade on Pat Mahomes this week. I know it sounds like a great matchup versus Cleveland, but they've actually played very well versus quarterbacks in terms of fantasy points given up. Their run D is so bad that teams can choose to run it, run it down their throat and be successful. The Browns have actually given up the 8th fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks this season, and I don't think this game should be very close leading to a ground-heavy attack. Plus, Mahomes is the most expensive QB on the board, so I feel comfortable with the fate here. On to the high-end running backs. Kareem Hunt is my favorite play of the week going up against the Browns. I think the Chiefs, Chiefs put up points, and I'm not that interested in Mahomes, so I will be all-in on Kareem Hunt. They are 27th in run defense, DVOA, 30th in run defense per PFF, 23rd in yards per carry allowed, 31st in rushing touchdowns allowed, and 28th in rushing yards allowed per game. He's also had five catches in the past three games, offering us a solid floor as well. And Todd Gurley's price went down again on DK for no reason at all, so we're going to have to keep playing him. New Orleans has played very well against the run this year, but they also haven't played the Rams yet. Even so, Todd Gurley is heavily involved in the passing game, so he'll always get it done. And Alvin Kamara is at a nice discount this week, and I love him in this matchup versus the Rams. The Saints took advantage of the matchup last week versus linebackers who couldn't cover in space, and they're likely to do that again this week. The Rams have a great defense, but also have struggled versus the run when teams aren't playing catch-up. They are 25th in run def defense DVO DVOA and 27th in yards per carry allowed. I also like CMC versus the Bucks, who will be missing Vita Vea, which makes this defense even worse. It's hard to imagine, but he should see his volume through the passing game and get it down the ground as well. On to the mid-range. Adrian Peterson looks, has looked fantastic this year. He has 96 plus rushing yards in five of his seven games this season, including a touchdown reception last week. The Falcons have not been good against opposing RBs as they are last in fantasy points allowed to running backs. And they have allowed the most receptions to RBs and are 26th in yards per carry allowed, 29th in rushing touchdowns allowed, 26th in run defense per PFF, 29th in run defense DVOA, and 31st in rushing yards allowed per game. On the same team, also like Chris Thompson, if he is healthy enough this week, as I just said, Atlanta gives it up to pass-catching running backs, and that's a specialty. And lastly, I have Latavius Murray versus Detroit. The Lions have been awful versus the run, ranking 30th in run defense, DVOA, 30th in yards per carry allowed, and 31st in rushing yards per game allowed. Murray has four touchdowns and has averaged 112 total yards over his last three games. Out of the bargain bin, I'm going to play Chris Carson again, as he's getting near 30 touches and is less than 5K. Carson has rushed for over 100 yards in three of his last four games. And lastly, Nick Chubb's another guy who's just way too cheap and who could get 20 touches against one of the worst defenses versus opposing running backs this season. I am worried about game flow, however, so Duke Johnson is a possible flyer and sneaky play. On to receivers. At the high end, the number one play is yet again Adam Thielen. Not only has he been the best receiver in the league this year, he also has a matchup against the 30th ranked DVOA Lions pass defense that got torn up by Seattle last week. Diggs will be locked up with Darius Slay, allowing Thielen to run free again. Next up is Michael Thomas. He only has 20 targets in his last four games versus the 40 he saw in his first three weeks. But if you look at the matchup, you can see why. He will be guarded by Mike Marcus Peters this this week. This one has not been a he's not been a good corner this year, and this game is going to be a shootout, and he should be back on track. I also just listed all three Rams receivers because I just love this game. The Saints are a funnel pasty, and I know Gurley will get it done, but I really love the passing game here for the Rams. Bonus to whoever PJ Williams is on, which I would assume would be cut most of the time. 
I really don't like the mid-range this week, but Jarvis Landry is a pretty cheap option going against the Kansas City Chiefs. Landry leads the league in targets per game, which is 12, over the last four weeks, and the Browns should be in catch-up mode. Also, with Golden Tate gone, Kenny G and Marvin Jones should get a huge bump. I prefer Galladay as he should be the one getting guarded by Trey Waynes. On to the bargain bin, my favorite play is Cortland Sutton, who I think will be the highest on receiver in the slate. With Thomas gone, that leaves Sutton to do the damage. Next up is DJ Moore, who played a season-high 46 snaps last week, which is a 70% uh, snap share. Campus Secondary has given up 20 touchdowns this year versus only one interception. He should also see some MJ Stewart coverage, who is my favorite guy to target against. Traquan Smith, Smith is also a nice way to get cheap exposure in this game. He gets a nice matchup versus Troy Hill, who he should be able to burn deep. No need to worry about Cameron Meredith, as he has snapped at, out-snapped him 41-9 to last week. On to the tight ends. Wow, it's really ugly here this week with most of the studs off the main slate, so it's tough sledding here, but there is a few options. Notice I don't have Kelsey listed here, but you can play him, but I personally am not. Surprisingly, Cleveland has played really well versus tight ends this year, as they are second in DVOA versus them this year. So tight ends versus Tampa Bay has been a thing all season, except for last week. But Greg Olson is in game. Carolina has also been smashed by tight ends this year, so we can use the talented O.J. Howard versus them as they are 28th DVOA this year against them. David and Joku goosed everyone last week, so he should come in lower own this week as he yet again has a great matchup versus the Chiefs, who are 27th DVOA versus the tight end this year. And I can see the Browns having to throw a good amount in this one. Last up is Kyle Rudolph. All he, all he needs to do to, is to fall in the end zone for us at this price, which can certainly happen against Detroit. They're the 31st DVOA against the tight end this year. The defenses, I think you almost have to pay for the Bears this week. They get to go against the Nathan Peterman experiment. The over-under in this game is 37.5, and, and Chicago is favored by 10 points. I also like the Chiefs a bit, but I do think the Browns are going to put up points, so I'm still deciding what to do with them. 